Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. So, let's get things rolling with GM and a new addition to its family car alphabet that is hoped will give the general yet another correct spelling for sweet success. GM dubbed it their Project GM20, or the end car, no doubt standing for notchback, niche, and necessity. First, notchback is the only way it comes, and for 1985, its formal roof line carries only two doors, the four-door is still a year away, and it's found its niche. Its compact 103.4-inch wheelbase fits neatly between the larger X and A bodies and smaller J car. And since necessity is the mother of invention, GM views it as a necessity that this car reestablish their reputation as a builder of high-quality, smallish front-wheel drive cars. It'll be sold by three divisions, and all models will sport familiar names. From Oldsmobile, it's the Calais. From Buick, the Somerset Regal. And from Pontiac, it's a new Grand Am. Now all three will have the same powertrain, with the base engine a reworked version of Pontiac's 2.5 liter four-cylinder Iron Duke. Now it's called the Tech 4, and will come standard with an Isuzu-made five-speed manual or optional GM three-speed automatic. But more intriguing is the alternative, Buick Design 3-liter V6. This multi-port fuel-injected power plant will deliver a 0-60 to 60 sprint in just over 11 seconds. Not bad for what is basically a luxury-oriented coupe. In-car suspension components are well known. They're based on the J-body. You'll find McPherson struts up front and a semi-independent twist beam axle on trailing arms around back. But while the mechanics of all three models are mostly the same, GM Brass is allowing each division a longer leash for their own styling and trim. The Pontiac Grand Am is the sportiest of the lot. Its slick, aggressive shape is supposed to appeal to the young, import-oriented buyer. And it's the only one you can order with wide Eagle GT tires on 14-inch cast aluminum rims. Inside, the Grand Am is right up to date with the stark, high-tech look. Most frequently used controls are pod-mounted for fingertip operation. On the other hand, Buick Somerset Regal is more traditional, sort of in the computer age luxury vein. The interior is very comfortable with an all electronic digital dash standard. The radio controls are placed above the center console on a small pod. The receiver itself is hidden well under the dash. In car number three is being offered over at Oldsmobile. They want to attract younger buyers too, but without ignoring their older, more conservative clientele. So the Calais comes off looking the most conventional of the trio. It also looks the most expensive. Not by accident, the front is marked by a familiar cutlass-like grille. And it has Omega-like taillights around back. The interior is draped in classy fabrics. And many convenience features are arranged more for comfort than just for appearance. The standard dash provides only the most necessary readouts, though there is an optional full electronic package and a needle and dial rally cluster. The Calais ride is also slightly bent towards the younger driver. It's a bit stiffer than a comparable Somerset Regal, though not as firm as the Grand Am. So with three variations of the in-car around, GM should be able to cover a lot of competitors. Not only that, they're also offering a wider choice between divisional clones than has been their policy in the recent past. One of the advantages that General Motors has over its competitors is that they can afford to introduce a car line for almost every market niche. Most car makers usually depend on a single model to cover two or more sales classes. And while GM's in-car will make the other brand's job even harder, there are a lot of reasons to believe that General Motors' carryover products will also remain tough and vibrant adversaries. Speaking of toughing it out, GM's full-size rear-drive family sedans are still warming dealers' hearts. Some of them, like this Chevrolet Caprice, are getting significant upgrades this year. Caprice will add a new 4.3-liter fuel-injected V6 as standard on everything except their four-door wagon. Along with its sister model, the Pontiac Parisienne, it also gets a less sedate interior and an improved ride.
Together, they will probably be toting large middle American families around for a lot of years to come. Other divisions will also still sell some large rear drive cars, at least through 1985. At Oldsmobile, the Delta 88 and Custom Cruiser add new grill and trim while Buick's LeSabre series and Electra Estate continue with expanded choices in fabric and paint. Performance and pizzazz seem to be the keys to success for the so-called G-body rear drive class. The best-selling car in America, the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, continues in both two- and four-door body styles. Top performance honors will be taken by the demurely fast and flashy Cutlass 442. At Buick, a similar story surrounds the Regal, though only the two-door coupe will be offered for 1985. The Regal T-Type, with its menacing appearance and sophisticated 3.8-liter turbocharged V6, continues to redefine state-of-the-art. It's one of the first recipients of GM's new electrically-driven power brake system. Pontiac's four-door Bonneville and two-door Grand Prix have revised front and rear treatments for 1985 while Chevrolet also adds its new 4.3-liter V6 as standard equipment on the Monte Carlo. Crowd-pleasing race-bred Monte Carlo SS makes a bow to practicality with a four-speed overdrive automatic along with a wider choice of colors. The General's only rear-drive hatchbacks are the subcompact Chevrolet Chevette and Pontiac 1000. This 10-year-old design stays pretty much the same for 1985. But changes are anything but minimal for GM's small front-wheel drive car lines. Chevrolet will continue as GM's small car marketer with no less than three Japanese design models. Along with the mid-year introduction of a four-door sedan made in California with Toyota, separate Japanese-made import models will be available in limited numbers for each coast. The West gets the Chevrolet Sprint, made by Suzuki. Early sales of this cheap, ultra-high mileage, three-cylinder mini hatchback have been pretty impressive. In the east, the car will be this Chevrolet Spectrum. A subcompact, this Isuzu-made car will be available as a three-door hatchback and a four-door sedan. The big news for GM's domestic front-drive small cars is the addition of two more cylinders for its J-bodied Chevrolet Cavaliers and Oldsmobile Forenzas. When these 1985 models hit the road, a Chevrolet design 2.8 liter multi-port fuel injected V6 will be available on most models. Installed here in the new high performance Cavalier Z24, output is rated at 130 horsepower. Coupled with the standard four speed manual, a zero to 60 sprint should take no more than nine seconds. Unfortunately, this exciting Cavalier Z24 package won't be out till spring. Other J bodies, the Buick Skyhawk and Pontiac Sunbird, will still offer a 1.8 liter turbocharged four cylinder as their top engine option. And once again, you can order the Sunbird or Chevy's Cavalier as a convertible. 1985 will also still see several versions of the much criticized mid size front drive X bodies. Now, Oldsmobile has dropped the Omega, and Pontiac has axed the Phoenix. The Buick hangs in there with the Skylark in a four-door sedan body style only. And you'll still be able to get the Chevrolet Citation 2 in four and two-door hatchbacks, with the latter available again as the driver-oriented X11. Then we come to the most popular of all the General's front-wheel drive car lines, the A-Body. The sales leader is again from Oldsmobile, the Cutlass Sierra. For 1985, the front end gets a minor facelift wraparound tail lamps in the rear. Like many other GM models this year, the Sierra can be ordered with a high center-mounted stoplight. Over at Chevrolet, the Celebrity also gains the port-injected V6. Otherwise, its stylish and fine-handling Eurosport package continues with only minor alterations. A bit more has been done, though, to the driver's A-car, the Pontiac 6000 STE. New and unmistakable rear end treatment features wall-to-wall -wall tail lamps behind neutral density lenses. Buick Century lineup, spearheaded by the classy T-Type, will limit changes to options and trim. And all four divisions will again offer four-door wagons. And that brings us to the C-Body, GM's full-size, luxury-oriented front-wheel drive cars. Introduced as early 85 models last spring, sales are way ahead of projections. Olds is putting out two versions, a High Line 98 and even Higher Line 98 Regency, both with two or four doors. At Buick, it's the Electra and Park Avenue, and the 
forever delicious Electra T-Type. Of course, GM's biggest front drive models, the Buick Riviera and Olds Toronado, aren't new at all. But 85 is their final chance before another radical downsizing effort, so this year they remain mostly untouched. Once again, the Riviera will also be available in a convertible that looks right at home in Palm Springs. Available on a limited number of Riviera coupes will be a computerized cathode ray tube control center, a touch sensitive screen with key information and controls for climate and radio and day, date and time is only a fingertip away. Riviera will also offer a factory installed cellular phone. On the pure performance front, tuned port injection is the tune being sung at GM. 1985 Chevrolet Corvette is relying on the laws of physics to increase the horsepower of its already potent 5.7 liter V8. It's up 12% to 230. Intake air is routed through long aluminum runners where its pulsating frequency allows denser air to be inducted into the multi-port injected engine. The result is boost without the complications of turbo or superchargers. Inside you get new fabrics, an automatic climate control, and bolder graphics on the fully electronic cluster. To cure criticisms of a teeth-shaking ride, spring rates have been reduced and stabilizer bar diameters increased with no apparent compromise in handling. Tuned port injection has also been added to the top-line F cars. Chevy is introducing a new Camaro IROC Z above its familiar Z28. Named for the international race of champions, the IROC Z has a lower stance and more laid-back graphics than the Z28. It also has 215 horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of 7 seconds. For smooth cornering, it relies on gas over oil shocks, higher effort steering, and Corvette light gator back tires. Like all Camaros, there's also a revised front and rear end treatment. Now Pontiac isn't being left out of this modest F-car revolution either. It likewise will sport a new nose and tail on the fire-breathing Firebird. But Pontiac's most anticipated performance news won't come out until January, when the long-rumored V6 Fiero will finally be let loose. The short drive we had indicated that now this slick two-seater can live up to its looks in both show and go. There's also big news coming out of the tailpipes of both Chevrolet and GMC trucks because the midsize M-Van has finally arrived. Available both as the Chevrolet Astro and this GMC Safari. Rear drive, built on a channeled frame welded to a unitized body, the Safari Astro Van combines aerodynamic styling with an airy and spacious interior. If you buy one with the 145 horsepower version of Chevy's new 4.3 liter V6, the cargo hauling and trailer towing limit is a generous 5,000 pounds. A wide traditional van door opens to seating for up to eight adults or up to 150 cubic feet of bulk. And unlike other small vans, the rear is accessible through twin outward swinging doors. But let's not forget about the GM division that just can't quite be compared to any of its sisters, Cadillac. Apparently, it wasn't enough that the new front-wheel drive Fleetwoods and DeVilles introduced last spring are selling like hot diamonds. No, they had to go and spruce them up a bit more with the addition of a two-door Fleetwood coupe. Still not satisfied, Cadillac had to stretch its point for 1985 with a new Fleetwood 75 limousine. Capacity for up to seven passengers, front-wheel drive luxury will never be the same. Just for openers, rear passengers will have total control over their own climate, radio, and remote door latches. The other big news for Cadillac will be the late availability of a V6 in the compact Cimarron. While the remainder of their lineup, rear drive Fleetwood Brougham, and soon to be downsized front drive Seville's, and elegant Eldorados are mostly unaltered for 1985. As before, the Eldorado will also be available in an ultra-elegant ragtop. So from the Chevette to the Fleetwood limo, something for everyone seems to be the General Motors way, and it's quite an array for 1985.